Hello, everybody. Happy uh, Happy Wednesday, and uh, welcome to my uh, Facebook Global Travel Update. Hope you're doing well wherever you happen to be. And uh, oh, I guess I can take this off now, uh, or maybe not. We're going to talk about that. The federal judge in Tampa, the ruling on Monday, basically claiming that the CDC has exceeded their authority and their mandate, and ruling that the CDC mask extension that was supposed to go till May 3rd was illegal. Uh, airlines wasted no time. In fact, they made announcements mid-flight that masks were then optional. Uh, and uh, the TSA announced they were no longer going to enforce the rule. And the, the and this ruling essentially made it uh, uh, essentially illegal for the mask mandate to apply to trains and buses, other forms of public transportation that were federally controlled. Uh, that include Amtrak. So lots of things to talk about, lots of stuff to unpack. I wouldn't throw this away just yet. I was on a flight yesterday from New York to Los Angeles. That's where I am right now. And uh, uh, I decided not to wear my mask, and I'll tell you why. Uh, but uh, at least half the plane was still masked, and I understand that. Uh, the announcement that was made on the plane yesterday was to, whatever your choice was, was to respect your seatmate's choice, uh, which, of course, speaks to the 7,400-plus cases of unruly, disruptive, or downright violent passengers that the FAA has recorded over the last eight or nine months, an overwhelming number of those mask-related. Uh, hopefully, this the, these numbers will go down. Uh, now, nothing's been signed off yet. The, the federal government has yet to announce if they're going to appeal. They have announced that they're deciding whether to, to appeal. But even if that's the case, uh, the horses have left the barn here. Uh, at least on airplanes. The crazy thing about this uh, this ruling, and I happen to think it was crazy, is we need to divide it out. And it and the ruling didn't divide anything out. It lumped everything together. And I'll explain. I'm a huge fan of the science, always have been, always played by the rules. If somebody told me to wear a mask, I wore a mask. But on airplanes, it was a different situation. The air circulation systems on airplanes are quite advanced, and this predates the pandemic. Air is brought in at about minus 60 degrees during the flight. It's heated by the engines brought into the plane's ventilation system, those nozzles over your head, pointing straight down, which is a good thing. And then the air is purged out every three minutes. That's a better circulation system than I have in my house, that you have in your house or in your workplace. So in that situation, I was very happy to, uh, to see the mask mandate be lifted. Not on trains, buses, and subways. Nuh uh. And yet it was. So that's why I'm saying if I'm on a train, bus, or a subway, this comes with me and it goes on. Uh, we'll obviously have more updates on this. The story's not over yet. But uh, in terms of uh, the mask mandate, I don't think they can come back and reinstitute it without having a lot of people getting upset about it. Uh, so stay tuned on that. There's one other issue that hasn't been dealt with yet in the world of reciprocity, and that's the 24 hour rule that's still in place for returning U.S. passengers to have a negative COVID test prior, 24 hours prior to their return flight, still in place. Even though so many countries in the world have gotten rid of that, I can go to so many countries right now without having to show a test in any case, as long as I can show proof of vaccination. And I've argued for a long time that the true metrics here should be what? The level of vaccination and the level of hospitalizations. And what are we seeing? the level of vaccinations going up and the level of hospitalizations going down. When we see cases, you saw the story earlier this week about the Princess cruise ship with cases of COVID-19. Really? Let's do the numbers again. How many passengers were on the ship and how many passengers got COVID? How many passengers who were on that ship were fully vaccinated? 100%. How many crew members? 100%. How many officers? 100%. So these are breakthrough cases either mild symptoms or asymptomatic. They were able to quarantine them. No real problems. Nobody got hospitalized. Nobody died. And if you look at the percentages, you're dealing with about 1.4 or 1.5% of the people who are on that ship. Any city in America that had a 1.5% caseload would be throwing a block party. So we need to put this in perspective. We have to get into the phase of managing the virus because that's what we're doing now. Now, I'm completely convinced I'm going to get it. You're going to get it if you already haven't. But if you're vaccinated and you got your booster, 
And by the way, if you're qualified for a second booster, get it. Uh, you need to go on and just, you know, deal with it like we would deal with the flu. Obviously, play by the rules, follow the science, listen to the doctors. But at the same time, you know, we're looking at this inverse relationship now that's uh, that's changing uh, in terms of travel and the decisions that we make to travel, where to travel, or if we're traveling at all. Four months ago, COVID-19 was the deciding factor on whether people were going to travel or how they were going to travel. You know what it is today? Gas prices and airline tickets. And that inverse relationship is getting even crazier. Remember, we're not even in summer yet, and we're having a problem. I talked about what happened last week. I was flying from New York to Cleveland. And 8 o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday, the, of course, staffing problems. Staffing problems at the airport, staffing problems at the airline, staffing problems at the TSA. There were so many people stuck in line at the TSA that a number of flights never left the gate because the flight crews realized, in some cases, they were 70 passengers short per flight. They were still stuck at security. By the time they did get on the plane and the planes pushed out, you know the rest of the story. So many people connect flights. Not that day. They missed their connections at their onboard airport. So we have to deal with that. And we're not even at summer yet. What do we have in this inverse relationship? Increasing demand almost exponentially now. Decreasing capacity as the airlines realize they can't staff it. But it's even crazier than that. At the hotel level, hotel rates are climbing higher than 2019 levels. And are the hotels getting those rates? They are. Are the hotels fully booked? They're not. Why? They can't staff it. So they're getting the rates. They're getting more than they got in 2019, putting a 60 or 70% cap on occupancy because they clearly cannot physically staff the hotel to serve those people. This is a bizarre state of affairs. Now, it's compounded by what? Inflation, high fuel prices, and then, of course, COVID coming in every once in a while. And we're not even at summer yet. My airfare, I came into Los Angeles last night from New York. I will say this, uh, earlier this week on Monday, the same day as the mask mandate was ruled illegal by the Tampa federal judge, that was our premier date in New York for Tanzania, the royal tour. President of Tanzania was there. And uh, and now we're out here in Los Angeles today because tomorrow we're premiering it uh, with the president uh, in Los Angeles as well. And it's on the air now. It's on the air on PBS. Check your local listings. It's available on uh, Amazon Prime and Apple TV+. Plus. I hope you get a chance to see it. But the point that I was making about airfare is that I booked my airfare coming to Los Angeles last night three or four weeks ago because I knew what day I had to come. Normally, I don't have that, that privilege uh, or that luxury. My airfare, when I booked it three or four weeks ago, was $290 round trip. You know what it was last night? If I had bought it yesterday or even two weeks ago, $810. That's where we are. And again, we're not even at summer. It's crazy. So if you're looking to book a flight, it's not going to get any easier because the airlines have done something counterintuitive. They know the demand is there, but they can't support it. And as a result, they're cutting capacity, right? JetBlue cutting 27 routes for the summer. Unheard of. United pulling 20,000 20, flights off the schedule in May and June. Southwest cutting 10% of their flight schedule, which means law of supply and demand kicks in. You don't win. If you want to book flights, do it now. You want to book frequent flyer awards, do it now. It's not going to get better until September because they can't staff anything until September. It doesn't. You can't train a pilot overnight. You can't train a flight attendant overnight, and that presumes they're available to be trained that the workplace is going to support it. Where's the pipeline? It's not there. So stick around for that. It's uh, it's crazy. By the way, speaking of flights, uh, this weekend I'm getting on a plane again. I'll be in Atlanta at the convention center uh, on Saturday and Sunday at the uh, Atlanta Travel and Adventure Show. And the following week, I will be in Denver at the convention center speaking at the Denver Travel and Adventure Show. If you're in those towns any of these two weekends and you're there, and I'm there. Let's get together. Come see me. I'd love to. I'd love to say hi. Now, lots of things to talk about today. In addition to that, and that's your question. So let's go to them right now. I'm uh, okay. All right. Here we go. Ah, 
Okay, everybody's saying hi today. Hello from Irvine. Hello from Northern California. Greetings from Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. I will be there next week. We're doing the premiere of the Royal Tour in Dar es Salaam on the 28th. Then I'm going to Denver. I'll be on airplanes. Uh, okay, uh, uh, greetings from Arusha. Uh, and, uh, oh, everybody's watching from Tanzania today. Hello, guys. Tanzania, okay. Did I just say Tanzania? <laughs> I'm tired. All right. Uh, Kirkland, Washington, say hello. Well, that must be close to Costco. Uh, all right. Hello from Coronado. Harvey saying, wintry central British Columbia. Okay. Ah, took your advice and redeemed aeroplan points. That's Canada, Air Canada. And we are off to Spain and Tenerife for almost a month in September. Timing is everything. You'll have a great time. Uh, by the way, Outside of Tenerife, one of the great dark sky, sky watching locations in the world. We just shot there about two months ago. Go get somebody to take you out there at night. You see everything. It's unbelievable. Uh, Michelle saying hi from Tampa, home of the federal judge who ruled that the masks were illegal. Uh, all right. To Joseph saying tuning in from Nairobi. Um, okay. Ah, here's an interesting question. Is what I did in the Royal Tour of Tanzania available to everybody? It is. That's the whole point of this show. In every Royal Tour we've done for the last 22 years, other than my sit-down interview with the head of state in the palace, the rest of the show, when we're running around the country, it's a mandate for us. Everything that I do with the head of state has to be accessible to everybody watching, everybody around the world. Otherwise, why do it? Uh, all right, Mike is back home in Fort Lauderdale. Ah. Serengeti's weighing in. Hello, Paul. Lisa's saying hi from Syracuse. A lot of guys who work with me are from Syracuse, so they're saying hi right back. Uh, okay, Patty, Patty Ford says, how was Vail? You got me. I wasn't in Vail. I'll let you know when I go. Uh, Karen is saying from Old Bridge, New Jersey. Okay. Um, ah. Priya says she heard my podcast with the CEO of Copa Airlines. That's Pedro Halbrun. She says, I booked Copa connecting to Lima through Panama City. That is a great airline, and they have a great hub and spoke system through Panama City. They figured it out. If I need to go anywhere in the Caribbean, Latin, or South America, uh, if I'm coming even from Los Angeles, the connections work. If you don't mind going through Panama City, by the way, I don't mind going to Panama. But as a connecting flight, it works. I'm glad you're doing it that way. All right. Uh, Mike is saying, I didn't see your figure there. Mike, I think you made a typo there. Can, oh, no, you didn't. I'm reading this. Business class from Miami to what? Barcelona? $7,300. This is the time to redeem your frequent flyer miles. That's outrageous. Um, okay. Another tuning in person from Tanzania. Uh, wow. Everybody. Hello, everybody. We got lots of folks in Tanzania watching today. Uh, okay. Uh, right. I'll be at the Atlanta Travel and, and Adventure Show. That's up there on the wall. Uh, ah, Colleen says, I booked all my flights, mostly with frequent flyer awards, up until September. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. And remember, even if you have to cancel later on, it's not going to be draconian to redeposit your miles. Uh, Ah, Sandy saw it. Love the Royal Tour on PBS. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, all right. Ah, okay. John Valdastri, my good pal John from United Airlines, formerly Continental. Greetings from Newark Airport. John, go get him, man. I know John hasn't been feeling well lately. John, we're pulling for you. All right. If you ever get to United Airlines in Newark and you're lost, beaten up, I mean, abused, the man you need to see is John Valdastri. He roams the corridors. He roams the, 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 the corridors and the, and, the, and, the, and the airport wings, the departure gates. He knows everything. He's a hero. Uh, feel better soon, man. Uh, okay. Let's see. Ah, Zanzibar is checking in. Part of Tanzania, of course. Uh, all right. Sandy says, do I think the 24-hour rule for international travelers back to the U.S. will be sunset by September? absolutely it will not survive summer that is my prediction i'm banking on it right it's the world of reciprocity it's a, it's now it's now just a it's not just a public health issue if you're vaccinated it ceases to have as much meaning 
and now it becomes a commerce issue. It's gone. It's just question is when. Uh, all right. Ah, Patty says Copa to Argentina. Yep. Yep. Same deal. Uh, okay. Jay, Joy Daniel says, or is it Joy or Jay? It's Joy. Any advice on travel insurance? You're going to advise about it today? All right. I will advise it today. There are about four different kinds of travel insurance. There's the old days travel insurance. When I was growing up, you could buy flight insurance at the airport at some stupid kiosk. You never wanted to do it then. It doesn't really exist much now. But in the old days, what that was is if the plane crashed, you got like, you know, $100,000. You didn't get it. You were dead. Somebody else got it. But even I remember reading the, the provisions of the policy. If you lost a finger or you broke a hand, nobody buys that insurance anymore. Useless, worthless. Then there's travel interruption and uh, cancellation insurance or trip cancellation insurance. That's what you usually see when you go online to book an airline flight. Here's my advice. Please listen. The way it's set up is you can't complete the transaction online unless you either, either opt in or opt out of the insurance. You don't know what you're covered for. You don't know what you're not covered for. Even in the best of intentions, you go, oh, I better, better do it. No, please don't do that. I'm not telling you not to get insured. I'm telling you to be better informed. Pick up the phone, talk to a travel advisor, a travel agent, someone who can walk you through the hieroglyphics of that policy language so that you find out what you're covered for or worse, or better, what you're not covered for, okay? Otherwise, you're just pissing money away. We learned that in the pandemic, didn't we? How many people bought flight insurance or trip cancellation and interruption insurance only to find out that on page 95 of the policy, which you never got to, by the way, I'd never get to it either, was a clause that say, oh, by the way, we don't cover for pandemic, see ya. So talk to somebody, okay? And then figure out what your particular needs are. Because in every policy, whether you're buying an automobile policy, a homeowner's policy, there are exclusions, right? There could be pre-existing medical exclusions, age exclusions, destination and location exclusions. You got to get this down to the to a, to a mutually agreeable definition of terms, and you can't do that online. Okay. Uh, now, there's one other kind of insurance I want to talk about, and that's medical evacuation and repatriation coverage. I'm a huge supporter of that. Uh, I've had it now for more than 20 years. Thank God I've never had to use it, but I carry the card. There are a number of really good companies that provide it. Uh, uh, Travel Guard does a great job. Uh, MedJet Assist does a great job. Uh, there are other companies that offer it, but once again, you need to have that conversation about all the exclusions, but also their definition of terms. Under the under the policy that I have with MedJet Assist, and it's similar similarly written for um, for uh, Travel Guard. If you're hurt or injured or sick overseas, they will first of all cover you to get medically stabilized at your location, and then they will in con in consultation with your personal doctor by the way, who knows your medical history better than your own physician, determine how, where, when to get you back home to a doctor and medical facility of your choice. That's in my policy. That's not in every policy. And you don't want to give them the choice. You want it to be your choice. So check out either Travel Guard or MedJet Assist or any of the other policies, but make sure it's in the language there. Now, you may not be able to understand the language, which is why you want to talk to a travel advisor or a travel agent to do it. And they get commissioned on this. You're not asking them to do work for nothing, but you need to be able to make an informed decision. All right, those are your insurance. Okay, here we go. Ah, all right, someone's saying hi from Argentina. Uh, ah, thank you for your points advice. I'm using Aeroplan, that's the Air Canada plan again, going to Cairo in February of 2023. You're thinking ahead. Okay. Ah, Bjorn is with a report. Apple trees are starting to bloom in the Hudson Valley. You know it's going to snow tomorrow. I'm kidding. But, you know, it could. April is a wild month. Uh, Cross-country skiing in Manhattan. I've seen it happen before. Anyway, more on that later, but congratulations on the apple trees. Uh, Patty said she's been flying United for 60 years. And what did they give you a testimonial dinner yet? Let me know when that event happens. I'll come. Uh, okay. Watching from Kilimanjaro. All right. A lot of people watching from Tanzania. Okay. Uh, all right. Hello from Chicago. Still cold here. Yeah. Welcome to April. Uh, I need to get to, to uh, Salt Lake City, Utah on June 17th. Okay, Ann. What's your question? 
Uh, ah, here's your question. What airline do I suggest less than $700 Newark to Salt Lake City? Any other airlines? Yeah. Believe it or not, if you don't mind making a stop, check out Sun Country. Check out Frontier. Uh, if you're looking for a nonstop, and if you're going to Newark to Salt Lake City, you're talking about United Airlines, then that's what it's going to cost you. But check out any of the other airlines that would make a stop. And it's, and by the way, if you're going to make a stop, make sure it's at least a 90-minute connect time. All right. Uh, ah, any idea if France or Spain requires a certain time, this is from Rula, a time limit for taking the booster vaccine? It's not a time limit for the booster vaccine. It's a time limit for your last vaccine shot. So if you got a second vaccine, if you were doing like a Moderna or a Pfizer, and it was within 270 days ago, then you're okay to go. If it's outside of 270 days, which means nine months, you're not okay to go. You're, you're governed by the last shot you got, whether it was the second vaccine or the booster or the second booster. Now, there are some countries that have got down to 180 degree uh, cutoff, like Israel. But more or less, it's 270. Be safe. Get it done as soon as you can. It gives you a nine-month breathing time, right? And by the way, speaking of breathing time, this ruling by the federal judge, for the airlines, it was an emancipation proclamation. Uh, and for a lot of passengers, it was. But not if you're not going to do it responsibly, right? Keep bringing the mask. But it doesn't mean you're, you're free to go to a bar six inches next to the next guy, not knowing who's been vaccinated and who hasn't, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. All right. Here we go. Um... <laughs> oh, Mike. Mike Lukens wants to know, am I going to bid on Crystal's office furniture? What a sad statement. Yeah. I, you know, look, they're, they're liquidating the company. And the answer to your question is no. However, there's a guy out there. I'm going to have to get him on the show. I want to get a video tour of his house. I know him very well. He's been on my radio show many times. We've traveled together. His name is Peter Canego. For the last 30 years, he's done this remarkable thing, and he's dedicated to doing it. You know, we've seen more ships, more cruise ships scrapped in the last two years. It's sad. In Turkey and in uh, Bangladesh. Uh, if you ever get a chance to watch an amazing 60 Minutes piece that was done by the late Bob Simon, uh, please try to find it. Look for it. It was the piece he did on where ships go to get scrapped and, and ripped apart. Uh, and uh, what happens when they get ripped apart? Well, they're cutting them apart, right? But what about what's in the insides of the ships? The beautiful woodwork, the wainscoting, the bars, the marble, the tapestries, the mosaics. What happens to them? Peter Canego gets on a plane and goes to Bangladesh and India and Turkey and he gets stuff and he brings it back. And uh, I got to get him on the show. His collection is remarkable and uh, well worth seeing. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Mary says Delta owns the most gates in Salt Lake City. They do. Uh, so for that matter, if you're changing planes. All right. Let's keep going down here. Uh, can an Amer Michael wants to know, can an American citizen rent a car from South Africa and drive it into Zimbabwe. I have one three-letter word for you. Why? Why would you do that? Liability issues alone, uh, unless you're doing the Dakarta, <laughs> the Dakarta to <laughs> across the Dakar rally, uh, I wouldn't advise it. Uh, if you want to do something from South Africa to Zimbabwe, here's what you do. Go on Robos Rail. It goes from Pretoria all the way up to Vic Falls, but of course, in order to do that, where does it go? Right through Zimbabwe. Check it out. One of the great luxury train trips left in the world. This is out of Africa at its best. I highly recommend it. Uh, and what this train is, is a guy named Rohan Voss discovered one day, about 20 years ago, that there were all these rail cars that hadn't been used, uh, that were built for royalty by South African railways. They were just sitting on a siding. Talk about Wayne Scotty. And... Uh, so we went to South African Railways and said, hey, can uh, can I use these cars and come up with this if you'll pull them? And they said, yes, this is Orient Express time times two. Check it out. OK. Um, all right. Now, let's go to the trivia question for today. Speaking of the Royal Tour of Tanzania, uh, of course, this is self-serving. First, I'll do. 
I'm going to show you the, the trailer for the show. It says it's premiering April 18th. It is. It's starting April 18th. But this is my first time to talk to you since April 18th. So roll the trailer, then the trivia question. Prepare yourself for an epic adventure through a land inhabited by peoples who cling tightly to ancient traditions, while their fellow countrymen freely embrace the marvels of modern life. It's a place that lays claim to being the cradle of all mankind and boasts of fabled spice islands of rare beauty that reveal both a dark past and a shining example of how people of differing traditions can live together in peace and friendship. <laughs> and on this trip, you'll sleep under the ocean, soar over the loftiest peak on this vast continent, float just above the reach of magnificent beasts. And descend deep underground in search of rare, precious gemstones found nowhere else on Earth. And our guide on this special journey is someone who knows this country better than most. She's explored its expanse of terrain, talked to its many peoples, and championed their dreams. She's a woman who's lifted herself from humble beginnings and overcame cultural challenges to confidently lead this country onto the world stage at a critical time in its development. Her name is Samia Saluhu Hassan. And she is the president of Tanzania. So buckle up. For the next hour, we're going on an exclusive inside the security bubble trip with this sitting head of state as she shows us her country as only she can. I'm Peter Greenberg, and this is Tanzania, the royal tour. And we're back. So much for that self-serving plug. But I promised you a trivia question, and here it comes, and it's Tanzania-related. Ready? How many separate languages are spoken in Tanzania? All right, I'll give you some time to think about that. Now, let's go up to some of your questions. Mike says, would I recommend still wearing a mask on an airplane given the recent rulings? You heard what I said at the beginning. I'm bringing my mask, and I'll make that decision on a case-by-case -case basis on a plane. However, train, bus, subway, it's on. In the back of an Uber, it'll be on, right? I don't trust it for the moment. All right, here's one from Gail, and it's an interesting question because I think there's something missing with this question. What are my chances for reimbursement when United cancels my flight, offers no rebooking options, and I book, book a new flight at my own expense? That doesn't happen. Do they cancel your flight? It happens all the time. Are they supposed to rebook you? Yes, they are. Did they offer you rebooking and did you turn them down? Or did they rebook you on a day or time that was just not convenient for you or impossible to make? Gail, send me some more information. Then I'll tell you what your options are. Uh, okay. Uh, any updates on dropping the testing and returning to the States? I gave the update already. I'm telling you it's going to be gone soon. Uh, all right, Anita says, my 21-year-old twins are going to Amsterdam and Paris and Brussels the end of May. Do they need boosters or a proof of boosters? They have vaccination cards, but not boosters. They want to be able to get into museums and restaurants. It's that 270-day rule again. When was the last time they got their last vaccination shot? Was it more than nine months ago? Then they'll need a booster. Was it less than nine months ago? They don't need one. 
If they're qualified for one, should they get one? I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on TV, radio, or Facebook, but I'd suggest you check with your doctor to see if it makes sense. But if you're looking for the actual cutoff dates, if it's outside of nine months, they'll need it. Inside of nine months, they're good to go. Uh, all right. Sarah says, how much does a safari typically cost in Tanzania like the one you went on? Well, I didn't go on a typical safari. I went all around the country with the president. Uh, and we our, our safari was maybe two days. Most safaris are between three and six days. And they vary in terms of your participation, where you go. But I will tell you this. You know, we all talk about the big five, seeing the great big five animals in Africa. I've been to Kenya. It's taken me a good seven to eight days to find it, to find all five, just the way it's laid out. Tanzania, I saw all five in one day. Think about that. That's cool. Uh, all right. Uh, Elon is saying, less worried about COVID now, but will it be safe to travel to Europe this summer with the current situation in Ukraine? Okay, I'm going to say this as kindly as I can. It's three words. Get an atlas. Look at it. Look at the map. Look at the borders. Look at the distances. Look at the time span. And you'll see that a calculated risk on my part is one based on information and history and intuition as well. I'd say yes, it'll be fine to go to Europe this summer. Now, will Europe change a little bit because of the refugee situation? Yes. Remember, one, one, one fifth of the population of Warsaw right now, Ukrainian refugees. But other countries are accepting them, but that's not going to ruin your experience. It might actually enhance it. So if you're thinking of going to Western Europe, Portugal, Spain, Italy, France, you know, the UK, why not? However, remember what I said about price. It's going way up. Okay, so if you're going to book it, book it now. Uh, okay, this is an interesting one from Jim. What's your take on Delta initially calling COVID an ordinary seasonal virus? Well, when did they initially call it that? Yesterday or back in January of 2020? January, February, March of 2020, I give everybody a free pass because nobody knew what the hell we were talking about. Today, it's a different story. So answer that question, and Jim, I can be able to give you a reasonable answer. Uh, okay. Uh, now, back to some of your other questions here. Let's let's scroll down. I'm coming all the way here. Uh, oh, we're getting more greetings from Zanzibar. Oh, we're getting the answers to the trivia question. All right. Somebody guessed, uh, let's see. Somebody guessed, no, that's wrong. That's wrong. Sandy, sorry, you're wrong. Sandy guessed 130. Kijana says 120. Also wrong. All right, but you're close. Why don't you split the difference? The number of languages spoken in Tanzania, ready? 126. Now, some of those languages are variations of Swahili, as you know, Swahili being the national language, uh, English, of course. But the other big, big area is the Niger-Congo language. About 600 million people in Africa speak a Niger-Congo language. And a smaller number of people speak Nilo-Saharan. But what's interesting about Tanzania is if you look at the history of that country and how many people wanted to govern it and do and marketing there, it was the Arabs, the Portuguese, the Germans, the Omanis, the British. So guess what? That's spoken too. French, German, Portuguese, and Arabic, all spoken in Tanzania. 123 separate tribes in Tanzania. And what unites them? It's language, not 126 languages, Swahili. So that uh, that might uh, put a bit. So uh, there you go. Who guessed 420 languages? Wrong. <laughs> nice try. Oh my God. My, uh, my screen just got very big here. Hold on a second. I'll figure it out. Or maybe not. I'll, go, I'll just scroll down here. Hold on a second. All right. I see what we're doing here. All right. Now, a couple of housekeeping rules and some not notifications. Our radio show this week. That's right. Saturday, same time, same place, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern time, or check your local listings. And if you can't find it, that's easy. Just go right to our website, petergreenberg.com, and you'll find the radio icon. Hit that. And anytime after about 10.05 a.m. Eastern, we will stream it live. It's also a podcast, so uh, no problem there. The Royal Tour, obviously known as Tanzania, the Royal Tour, is already airing on PBS stations around the country. Check your local listings. But it's also available now 
on uh, Amazon Prime and Apple TV Plus. Uh, now, next week, we'll be coming to you from Tanzania. This weekend, I'm in Atlanta. I'll be on airplanes, but I'll be speaking Saturday and Sunday at the Atlanta Travel and Adventure Show, then off to Tanzania, then back. And a week from uh, a week from this Friday, I'll be flying into Denver to speak Saturday and Sunday at the Travel and Adventure Show there. We'll also be broadcasting our radio show from Denver once we get there. So I hope you have a great rest of the week. It's a crazy week. Please don't forget to bring these. It's not over yet, guys. Be responsible. Be intelligent. No more fighting. And uh, be safe. I'll see you next week.